what's going on youtube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel i'm watching and i notice a lot of you are not subscribed but you are watching so i appreciate the views but make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you turn on those post notifications so you can be notified every single time i drop a video and you don't miss not one video everybody in here tuning in make sure you smash that like button it helps my channel grow and drop some comments down below if you have any questions for me any comments any suggestions anything that you liked about the video anything that you disliked about the video i want to hear it all i want to hear it from every single last one of y'all y'all know i respond to everybody even the negative comments you see that we hop right into the video today and judging by the title and the thumbnail you know we got a good one so that's why you clicked on the video i told y'all i'm going to be uploading videos more often i'm going to be dropping these back to back so i can get that new content out for y'all i'm super excited i cannot wait i'm very hyped about it and i know every single last one of y'all are going to enjoy it so let's get straight into the video so first we're going to be starting off our grooming with a good de-shedding bath and for that we are going to be using the Ferminator shampoo and conditioner. The Ferminator shampoo and conditioner is something that this company offers and one of the best shampoos that this company offers but I will say it's not the best shampoo and conditioner out there if you are looking for a really good quality de-shedding shampoo and conditioner. There's several other ones out there iGroom has a really good de-shedding shampoo and conditioner. I've used that before and it is absolutely phenomenal. But for this store, this is the best one that they offer and it does the job enough and well enough that it gets a good bit of the hair and the undercoat and everything like that out of the coat. And also let me know in the comments if you want me to do one of my next videos about the best quality shampoos and conditioners i know i talked about grooming products and i talked about different clippers and different things like that but i can go into detail about different types of shampoo and conditioners that you want to use on your dog at home and what gets your dogs the cleanest the first time you wash them and gets them extra clean if you wash them a second time if you are wondering about washing your dogs and how many times you should wash your dog it really all depends on your dog and how dirty the coat is the first time you wash the dog it lifts the oils and all that dirt up off the coat the second time you wash the dog it actually gets the dog completely clean so for me it's always best to wash the dog twice if you are having any issues once you can master washing the dog twice you can get to a point where you can get them really clean the very first time you wash them and you only have to wash them once but there is a big controversy because a lot of people believe that you only need to wash the dog once and some people believe that you should wash the dog twice but it really all depends on the dog and how dirty the dog is some dogs you have to actually wash three times and i've had dogs like that that i had to wash three times but it really all depends on the dog's coat texture how dirty the dog is and really just how clean you want that dog but i always tell everybody the key to a really good groom is a clean dog and a dry dog so for new groomers people who are washing their dogs at home people who are grooming their dogs at home the key the biggest key you can take away is to make sure your dog is clean and it doesn't mean using a lot of products on the dog when you're washing or scrubbing the dog you can just thoroughly soak the dog like drench the dog in water and if you're using a good product it'll suds up really nicely on the dog and it'll get the dog clean so another great takeaway is when you're washing a dog you don't have to use a lot of the product your suds and all that foam and extra froth that you get on the dog all that comes from the water being added to the soap on the dog's body so if your dogs are thoroughly wet and the water is like seeping through the coat once you put the shampoo and the product on the dog it's going to work itself and you also have to actually scrub your dogs i noticed in my career of being a dog groomer and i've watched some other groomers on youtube a lot of people just kind of rub the soap into the dog and wipe the soap into the dog when you want your dog really clean you have to actually scrub those dogs so for all of you that see me like really scrubbing the dog some of you are like wow you really get your dogs clean and the other ones are like why are you so rough when you wash them usually i speed up the bath so it looks a little bit more rougher than it actually is when i'm washing them but you want to actually scrub your dog because that is how 
you get your dog the cleanest. Think about when you are washing your hair. Do you just wipe the soap into your hair? No, you actually go in and you scrub your scalp. So, it's the same thing with dogs. You really want to scrub them, scrub their bodies really good, especially their feet because that's where they walk in the dirt the most, and that is how you get your dog extra clean. Another big part to the bath is the conditioning process. So with the conditioner, again, it's the same way as we do our hair. When you condition your own hair, you want to let that conditioner sit in your hair. And that is how it really kind of penetrates the scalp and your hair follicles in your hair. And that is how you get that soft texture to your hair. So when you are bathing, and conditioning your dog it's the same way so once you put that conditioner on there you want to massage it into the coat really well and then you want to let it sit i said this in my last video and i'll say it again i will usually let the conditioner sit for maybe 10 5 to 10 minutes 10 minutes at the most because you don't want to let it sit too long i mean the longer you let it sit the better it's going to be for the dog i've let conditioner sit in my own hair for like two hours and it gave amazing results but obviously working in a corporate setting which a lot of people do you don't have time to let your dog sit that long so i'll generally let them sit anywhere between five to ten minutes depending on how much time i have if i have a busy day or if i have a light day if i have a light day i'm going to let them sit a little bit longer if i have a busy day i'm going to let them sit at five minutes the most but the longer you let the dog sit in the conditioner the easier the conditioner is to rinse out because the conditioner is now sitting and soaking into the skin into the coat and penetrating and getting the coat as soft as you like it and also with a de-shedding conditioner it's also helping to loosen up some of that undercoat so when you go to blow dry them or brush that out a lot of that undercoat is coming out so if you have time while you're washing and bathing your dogs once you get to the conditioner process if you have time to let them sit it's always going to benefit you and the dog to let the conditioner sit on them especially if you're doing like a medicated shampoo or a medicated conditioner on the dog letting it sit will help the skin and ease the skin as well as kind of help promote the hair growth to grow in more healthier and a stronger coat
So just very quickly, just always remember when you are rinsing the shampoo and the conditioner, it is very important to get all the product out of the dog's coat unless it is a leave-in conditioner. If it is not a leave-in conditioner, you have to make sure all of the product is out of the dog's coat and off the dog's skin because if you leave it on the dog's coat and the dog's skin and it's not a leave-in conditioner, it will irritate the skin. When the dog, I've had a customer come back and say that the one groomer left product in the dog's coat and when she jumped into the pool there was suds all in the pool <laughs> so you don't want that to happen for one but you also want that dog's coat to be thoroughly rinsed because it'll irritate the skin and it also can entice allergies and make them super itchy and also a very unhappy pet parent so <laughs> make sure your dogs are rinsed thoroughly that is huge especially for when you're clippering because if you also leave product in your dog that can leave a white film on the dog and that can look like the dog is not clean your blades won't really cut through that so the reason why i take my time rinsing the product out of the dog is because i don't want to have to bring the dog back into the tub and re-rinse the dog so always make sure you are doing a thorough job
Okay, so now we are going to be getting started on her haircut, which, like I stated earlier, she does not get a big haircut. She doesn't get shaved because she is not supposed to get shaved. This is Kurumi, because I don't think I said it in the beginning of the video, but <laughs> now back to the video this is Garumi. <laughs> she is a palm cheese so she is a pomeranian chihuahua mix she is absolutely the sweetest little dog i have groomed i swear she does not get bothered by much the only thing she really is not a fan of is her nails and that is so common for chihuahuas and pomeranians so <laughs> it's not a big deal she really doesn't do much she just kind of backs away because she doesn't like it being done but as you can see she is super patient she is super cute oh my god she is absolutely adorable she is like I said, one of the best little tiny dogs that I've ever done because for the groomers, you know, when it comes to dogs, the smaller they are, the crazier they are. <laughs> so she is very patient, very, very sweet, but she will just be getting an outline trim. I'm going to be grinding her nails, doing her paw pads, doing her sanitary area, but just lightly on the sanitary area because that goes to blend in with her underline and her undercarriage so the belly so you don't want to get that too short so i just kind of neaten it up and scissor it up but as i stated she just gets an outline trim so i'm going to be using my thinning shears to neaten up her butt to neaten up her belly line and neaten up her chest her mother likes her really really round almost like a circle so i have to get her scissor as tightly as I can but make it as round as I can and as you can see she doesn't have a lot of crazy hair so it's not all over the place but she has a really nice decent coat and after the haircut she cleans up very very nicely also for everybody that's watching like you can see I did slow the video down drastically but it is still sped up a bit just so I'm not editing a two and a half hour video <laughs> So we knocked down a two and a half hour video to about 41 minutes. So it is still sped up. It's just not as fast. It's only about 1.5 as opposed to the regular speed of one. So that is why it seems like I'm brushing her super fast is because it's sped up just a little bit, but slow enough where you can still enjoy the video. So when doing an outline trim, you want to look at the dog's body and assess what is sticking out and what does not run to the outline of the dog's body. So if you're looking at a dog head on and their face is directly in front of you and you're looking at their face, anything that is sticking out on the sides of their body or sticking out on the sides of the ears, you want to scissor all of that so it runs with the outline of their body and they don't have anything sticking out, any sticky outies, any tufts, any random lumps or anything like that there. When you are scissoring the belly line you want to do the same thing so you want to comb the belly line comb the fur down and look at what is not even now looking at her here she looks pretty even but you can see there's a little line right up by the top of her elbow and there is hair under there so you want to scissor all of that up and get all of that neat and you want to neaten up her sanitary with that as well when you are scissoring the butt you want to comb out and fluff up the butt so you can see what is sticking out and then you scissor everything that is not aligned with the dog's body the best way to get that round butt look when people are scissoring and you say oh my god that butt is like perfectly round you want to scissor tighter in when you're going closer down to the hock so the hock is basically almost like that little it's like that little flabby flexible bone down there by the bottom of their foot so close of like where our ankle is and we got that little loose bone in the back and there's like just skin in between the bone in like your foot and the rest of your leg i don't know the ter the technical term i'm really sorry i don't think no i'm not even gonna say what it is because i don't think it is that but it's that is the hock on the dog so you want to scissor that tight and then kind of curve it upwards so there is a round part as you can see looking here you can see there's a curve so now i'm scissoring under there so there is a nice little curve and i'm making sure that down there her hock is tight
And while you're doing the outline trim, you also want to make sure that you are scissoring around the body and combing the body as you go because the comb, like I've stated in several videos, is going to be your best friend during your grooming process. So you'll be able to comb out the dog and see what else stands out and what else does not align with the outline trim that you are trying to perform. So right now as I'm going through her, I'm just going to be neatening up around her body. So that just means taking her body really tight, but not taking it too tight because I want to be careful that I don't want to scissor too much of her top hair because it will not grow back in prop properly. So whether you scissor it or you take a guard comb to it, if you're taking it in too tight, it's going to damage the coat. So you don't want to take too much off the dog. You just want to neaten them up pretty good. So now I'm going to go through and start scissoring her tail and what I do for the tail is I pull all of the hair in my hand all the way down to the tip of the tail and I scissor off just a little bit because they like her tail to be a little bit longer and I don't really do a lot afterwards. I may go through back and neaten it up but for the most part I just kind of take a little bit of the tip off and then I'll probably neaten up around the tail so it doesn't look severely uneven.
So now I'm going to go through and do her paw pads and as I've stated in several videos I use a 30 blade on the paw pads because in my opinion it gets the paw pads the cleanest and the neatest and I absolutely love a very neat paw pad. Also in my opinion and I feel like other groomers feel this way as well and some of the pet parents the paw pad hair is the fastest to grow that and the sanitary hair and the hair in front of their eyes. I don't know what it is but that hair grows faster than the rest of their body. I don't get it because those areas we take the shortest so I don't understand why they grow so fast but because they grow so fast I like to take them as short as I can. So as I stated earlier, she does not like her nails being done, but it's not really anything crazy. She's just small and she knows what she can maneuver out of. So she tries to maneuver out of me holding her front feet. Her back feet she does pretty decent for, but as you can see, she does not like her front feet being done. Which is super common because I don't feel like any dog really likes their front feet being done. It's very rare. It's almost like a unicorn dog when you see they're okay with their front feet but not their back feet. <laughs> but typically it's the front feet and she's not a fan of the front feet.
now I'm gonna be going through and doing her legs and her paw pads well scissoring around her feet so around the paw pads now for her front legs for those furnishings I usually just scissor about half of it off because they like her type they don't like everything completely going I'll scissor about half of it off and make it look tight now the one thing about double coated dogs is once you scissor their fur you can tell the next time where you scissor the last time because again that top layer is a little bit slower to grow but that undercoat grows a bit faster so it'll literally look like a little thin piece of hair and you can see where you scissor so I'll just scissor there just to kind of keep it tight like I did the last time and then for her natural feet because she is a Pomeranian Chihuahua they get what they call natural feet so they have hair that grows in between their toes and just slightly around their feet so when you're scissoring natural feet you want to get all that hair in between their toes so you can brush it up with your brush I usually just use my fingers and pluck it up and then I'll take my shears and I'll scissor around their foot and I'll scissor off anything that grows past the paw pad so when you lift up the foot and you have the foot pretty much in the air like backwards you flip it back almost like you're about to do nails and you see hair sticking up past the paw pad you want to scissor all of that away and that is how you complete a natural foot So now I'm going to be working on her mane and for her mane they like it more full so they like a fuller mane but they like it to be round so I'll go through I'll comb it see if there are any snags any tangles and if there are I kind of just go back through it with the brush but for the most part I just take her mane round because like I stated earlier they like her to be very round and they like her mane to be fuller almost like a lion but they don't want to cut into her coat and shave her down so right now I'm just kind of neatly taking a little bit off as you can see I'm not taking a lot off but I'm just going to be going through and rounding up her mane to kind of like match with her ears and thinning out her ears because her ears are a little bit full but I'm not going to thin out her ears too much because they like that a little bit fuller as well
all right now that we are finished with the hair cut and i've gone through and neatened everything back up we're going to take a quick look at her before so this is what she looked like before the hair cut all those sticky outies is before the bath she's not clean and now we're going to take a look at her after and this is what she looked like after and i think she looks absolutely adorable she is probably one of the cutest chihuahuas pomeranians i've ever seen <laughs> but make sure you guys drop a comment down below like this video it helps me grow train your dogs for grooming and i will catch you in the next video love you guys You're so funny. Hi. Hi. What are you doing? You don't want to be on camera. <laughs>